purity is the mind's normal state. It becomes blemished only because it accepts external intrusions, which make emotions like sadness and joy arise and proliferate until the mind becomes totally blinded to its own true nature. Luminous Essence The hut, the meditation path, and the little platform under the payom tree were Machi Gao's constant companions throughout the year. Except for her daily meal, she seldom left the confines of her meditation environment. Although the nuns still went to see Ajahn Mahabua once a week on Lunar Observance Days, Machi Gao rarely accompanied them, instead choosing to focus on intensifying her meditation practice. Despite Machi Gao's dedication to her practice, she still possessed an abiding sense of gratitude and respect for Ajahn Mahabua, and so every morning she cooked a small pot of sticky rice and prepared a basket of betel nut for him. Normally, Machi Gao would have one of the nuns bring her daily offering to Ajahn Mahabua, only occasionally did she go herself, and even then she would speak with him only briefly. Ajahn Mahabua's monastery was situated northeast of town, while Machi Gao's nunnery was two miles away to the southwest. Ban Hui Sai was in the middle. Despite the distance, and the fact that he never announced his travel plans in advance, Machi Gao always knew intuitively when Ajahn Mahabua left his monastery to wander through the region in search of solitude. She always knew when he had vacated his monastery, and she always knew when his return was imminent. Machi Gao said she would suddenly feel a chill pervade the environment when Ajahn Mahabua went away. And although he often traveled for months, Machi Gao always knew when he was coming, as she could feel the warmth returning even before he arrived. The chill and the warmth were the external signs that came through perception, but the knowing came from inside her heart. As soon as Ajahn Mahabua left to wander, Mechi Gao immediately told the nuns not to cook the pot of sticky rice or prepare the basket of betel nut. Several months later, when she sensed his return, she would tell the nuns to begin cooking the rice and preparing the betel nut for him once again. Normally, when he was living at the monastery, the nuns prepared only sticky rice for him. But on the day of his return, Mechi Gao insisted that the nuns prepare fluffy rice as a special offering. On the morning after his return, the nuns appeared at the monastery bearing gifts of rice and betel nut. He asked the nuns how they knew he was back in the monastery, since he had only arrived late the evening before. The nuns replied that Machi Gao had sensed his return and therefore asked them to prepare the usual offerings. Each time he returned from these travels, Ajahn Mahabua heard the same thing. Machi Gao always knew. She never failed. Manchi Gao had learned to examine phenomena using the specific perceptions of consciousness in tandem with the expansive awareness of intrinsic mental essence. She realized that consciousness flowed naturally from the mind essence to initiate perceptual activity, and perceptions were defined and interpreted by the mind's conceptual movement, which had its origin in the motionless essence. So she focused exclusively on the moment that the conscious flow stirred and emerged from the stillness of her mind's vital center. Each thought, each spark of an idea, ripples briefly through the mind, then ceases. Individually, these mental ripples have no specific meaning. They merely flash briefly into awareness and then disappear without a trace. Fragmentary ideas, the elements of thought, flash on and off with distinct beginnings and endings, like flashes of lightning or the blinking of fireflies, but the mental recognition that interprets their significance disperses more slowly through the mind, blanketing the flowing consciousness like a moving fog, before coalescing into distinct conceptual forms. Together, memories and thoughts combine to conjure up the concepts and notions of personal existence. Conceptual activity consists of naturally occurring mental phenomena that arise and cease spontaneously. These phenomena possess no awareness of their own. The awareness that knows them is the mind essence, the knowing nature that permeates everything. The mind is basically non-dual. It is just one vital reality. The flow of consciousness from the knowing center creates the illusion of duality, of inside and outside, of knower and known. Forms and concepts are phenomena conditioned by the movement of consciousness. Because of a subtle and pervasive delusion existing in the minds of all beings, the awareness that knows forms and concepts becomes attached to these creations of consciousness. 
Grasping at an individual personal identity, the mind turns feelings, memories, and thoughts into self. That grasping turns the mind itself into a personality. But thinking and feeling are actually just conditioned functions of the mind, not its original essence. Essence turning into consciousness creates a conceptual reality, not an essential one, and the conceptual reality of self is the object of deep-seated attachment. Mechigao realized that the true mind had no form and formed no conceptions. By spontaneously observing phenomena with clear mindfulness, she attained freedom from conceptual thinking, which allowed the knowing essence to relinquish mental constructs before they could establish a definite presence in the mind's conscious continuum. Before a particular thought or expression could fully form, the knowing essence simply let go, causing mental formations to dissolve into nothingness. Eventually, the detached nature of the mind's true essence became so all-encompassing that the multitude of conscious expressions failed to take hold, dissolving before its still, potent imminence. At that stage, Mechi Gao's mind resembled a battlefield where the forces of conscious existence were pitted against the all-embracing essence which encompassed everything but retained nothing. As profound emptiness constantly dissolved countless forms of emerging existence, the mind's knowing essence gained the upper hand, increasing in brightness and purity. When insight thoroughly penetrated the illusory nature of mental phenomena, the knowing essence relinquished all concepts, fully recognizing that they were merely ripples inside the mind and had no real substance. No matter how they appeared mentally, they were just conditioned forms, conventions of the mind that simply vanished into emptiness. There were no exceptions. Mechi Gao's meditation was destroying mental patterns that have dominated samsaric existence for aeons. Not a single thought managed to rise or form, indicating that true, spontaneous mindfulness was born. The mind's spontaneous observation was pure, undiluted attention that led naturally to clear and penetrating insight. When the mind understands clearly with intuitive wisdom that no self can be found within mental phenomena, liberating detachment occurs of its own accord. As the mind's focus grows narrower, the currents sent out by the mind grow shorter and more limited. Mechi Gao had investigated and understood conceptual phenomena so thoroughly that the clear, bright essence no longer made conscious contact with them. Thought and imagination within the mind had come to a complete halt. The mind's essential knowing nature stood out alone on its own. Except for an exceedingly refined awareness, an awareness that suffused the entire cosmos, absolutely nothing appeared. Mind transcended conditions of time and space. A luminous essence of being that seemed boundless, yet wondrously empty, permeated everything throughout the universe. Everything seemed to be filled by a subtle quality of knowing, as if nothing else existed. Cleansed of the things that clouded and obscured its all-encompassing essence, her mind revealed its true power. When the offshoots of delusion were completely cut, her mind converged into a nucleus of sublime radiance. A radiance so majestic and mesmerizing that Mechi Gao felt certain it signaled the end of all suffering that she had been striving to attain. Having relinquished all attachment to the factors of personal identity, the subtle radiant splendor at the center of the mind became her sole remaining focus. The focal point of her awareness was so exceedingly delicate and refined as to be indescribable, and emitted a happiness that was unprecedented and so wondrous that it seemed to entirely transcend the realm of conditioned phenomena. The luminous mind exuded a strong sense of power and invulnerability. Nothing seemed capable of affecting it. Mechigao was now certain that she had finally reached the ultimate goal, Nibbana.